when in Texas, grab a Raptor R and go and have some fun. And that is exactly what we're about to do. We're out here on my Ford GT tour, visiting my friend Supercar Steven. Now, my GT and the Mustang Dark Horse are currently parked around the corner with his McLaren P1, a car that I actually drove a couple of years ago. Well, he said at the time, if we're ever in the area, come and visit to come to the ranch. And today, we're doing it in style with the big one, with the Raptor R, the car that I have considered and would still consider in the future, but until today, I've never driven one. And this isn't just any drive. We're about to go and get a little bit crazy. Before Stephen comes to join us and we get this thing out, we've got hundreds of acres around here of off-road terrain. We've got some jumps coming up. It's gonna be a little bit insane, but this is the Raptor R. Now the Raptor R was, well, after the old V8s with the 6.2, they then had the 3.5 V6 Raptors, but then they went and stuck the Predator motor that's also in my Shelby GT500 into the truck. Nobody needs a 700 horsepower, immensely capable off-road monster like this with a Baja mode that makes a whole lot of noise, but it's not about what you need. It's sometimes about what you want and what you want to do with it. I'm not gonna lie, if this was over in the UK, it might be just a little bit too big, but as a Ford guy, you know, I've got the Ford GT, I've got the Shelby GT500, I've got my Mustang Dark Horse, I've got the Ford Focus RS Heritage Edition, and we have the Ford Transit Custom MSRT van that we use. One of these has certainly been on my radar, but given we're here in the United States, we need to get as American as we can. We're gonna take this thing out, have a blast, come along for the ride. But first, let's have a quick look around it. Let's go through the details. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Texas and welcome to some fun with the Ford Raptor R. As you can tell looking at this thing, we might or might not have already taken it out for a little run. Out here, we've got so much terrain to go and explore. And this is Ford's monster sports truck. I'm not entirely sure how you'd call it truck. Of course, it's a pickup to those of us over in the United Kingdom, but the F-150s have never really been available in Europe. People import them, sure. The Raptors are the ultimate version, and now it's the Raptor R. Stick the R badge on because a big change has happened under here. Taking away the engine that's shared with the 4GT of the previous Raptor, which had downsized from the V8, and sticking in this massive lump, the Predator lump, in fact. Let me come and see if we can take a look underneath the bonnet, underneath the hood. I should obviously say down here, give that a release, come round because it's all about the power and my word is there a lot of it in fact for the 2014 model year they've actually upped it even further now to 720 horsepower this is 700 horsepower you've got the massive supercharger underneath there but this is a thing with mega off-roading capabilities fully reinforced steel bumpers all of the things that you want to go and get a little bit lost in this kind of place we've got the trails we've got the fields that we're going to go and jump through as well there's a lot going on in fact there are a lot of easter eggs as well that they put into these cars because of course the american brand's highly competitive but the raptor r for me is this thing that well you can use it you know you've got the capabilities back there you've got a decent amount of space in the back in fact quite a lot of space actually for your occupants for your passengers get a bed cover and use it for whatever you need although over in europe we tend to be more about the vans about the closed smaller footprint type vans, the transits as we have back at base. I've got to give a quick shout out to Stephen's plate, R rating. This suits this thing down to a T, but come through with me. Let's get it started. I'm going to say hello to him in just a moment. But before we do, inside here, step up and into the things. Of course, it's lifted. It is massively high. Foot on the brake, start it up. That's just funny. You've got a button as well on the steering wheel for the exhaust mode, so you can pop it up into Oh, we can return it back to sport or put it into Baja mode. That's nuts. Absolutely nuts. So, yeah, here we are. How's it going? Good. How are you, Tim? Good to be here. Absolutely. Glad you could finally take me up on my offer. Well, you promised that if we were in the area, Yep, we would, I would come out to my ranch and uh, teach you how to properly off-road. <laughs> this is about as good as you're going to get in, and in Texas. I mean, this is a, as American of a vehicle as you can get. It literally is. It's so funny. You know, I, I've been like rock crawling a bit. I went up the Sharkle, which is where sure. they do the G-Wagon testing. But this is a bit different. This is completely different. I have a 4x4 squared and that's much more for slower paced rock crawling. 
this is ready to go jump and go 100 miles an hour off road. That's what <laughs> a completely desi different design suspension compared to the G Wagon for that. Because you have, it's uh, safe to say, you've done a ton of off roading, right? You've literally grown up around these. Yeah, things. I grew up. I mean, grew up on this property off roading, and my first 15,000 miles were off road in a Jeep before I ever even touched pavement. Um, so we've got an expert and we've got a complete novice. So here. this is my element right here. <laughs> okay, good stuff. What What is it that makes this thing so good? Like, So previously in the Gen 2, this is now Gen 3, they had the V6 twin turbo, the 3.5 liter, yeah. which is a great engine. And you can still get that same engine in this platform. Uh, this is the R, which has the 5.2 liter Predator supercharged V8. And uh, pretty much what they did is increase that power from 450 horsepower up to 702. <laughs> and uh, it just pretty much turned it from a nine up to a 12. <laughs> and uh, it's not something that is probably arguably necessary, but given that we're in Texas and America, I think it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> I and like I'm gonna it. I'm gonna show you why today. Should we, should we hop in and get this thing out? Let's go. Let's go have a drive. <laughs> You just spotted there's a little guy walking over here. A turtle that's popped up. I'm gonna go past all of the wildlife today. Absolutely. <laughs> it's absolutely baking. I mean, for you guys, this is normal. This is like it's normal, but still, it's, it, it's warm. I, I, I'm definitely used to the AC these days. <laughs> for me, I'm just melting. It's like, what, just under 100 Fahrenheit? Yeah, welcome to Texas. Yeah, literally. <laughs> the raptor back there looks pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. That's a good stance for it, absolutely. It looks mega over there. And this guy is just chilling, walking along the path. Now let's watch out for them. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want to run over this guy. No, 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 he wouldn't appreciate. We'll leave him undisturbed, chilling. Ready or slider. Yeah, those are very common here. There's a he's... bunch of them that live in that lake right there. Okay, he's sunbathing, right? Yes, yep, he's coming up here to warm himself up a bit. <laughs> All right, back over here. Let's hop in this beastie. It's quite a step up, but that's what you've got grab handles for. Oh, we need to get the AC going. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, it's so warm. Get the AC cranked up. Forward, built tough. Right. Nice, and of course, it's an F-150, right? So it has everything. All Absolutely. The tech, creature comforts. Four cup holders, so you can have plenty yeah. of Cokes or root beers or whatever you need. And for. you have like a fold out table thing here, don't you? Yes. I Doesn't this way, if that. I remember rightly, you press the button, it folds yep. down the shifter. Yep, we'll push that, folds down the shifter, move the water bottle, and you've and got that folds, and now you can do whatever you, you need to on the table. Absolutely. <laughs> All the necessities. Absolutely. Wowzers. All right. Driving modes, because there are tons of them, so, aren't there? Yes. I'll walk you through them. So there's seven of them. And whenever you start the truck, it's going to be end up being a normal. You can see that right there. Yeah. Then we're going to go to sport, is left. That puts it in four all. And then there's a towing mode, yeah. a slippery mode for bad weather that keeps it in four all as well. <laughs> and then if we go all the way back over to the right, we have the off road mode right here. Yeah. And that's just for it puts it in four high. Yeah. That's going to be a you know probably under 40, 50 mile an hour crawl. You know some light crawling, okay. off roading. Um, then you can go over to my favorite mode, Baja mode. <laughs> that turns off most of the traction control, opens up the valves all the way for the exhaust, keeps the RPMs revving yeah. higher, pretty much as, as aggressive of a mode as you can get in this truck. Yeah. And lastly, it's a mode I haven't used and you have to switch it to neutral for, is rock crawl mode. Okay, yeah. That's gonna be a lot lower speed and it's going to lock everything together and so that you can try to get maximum traction whenever crawling through a lot more, you know, tough terrain and we're going to be doing good doing you today. also in any of those you can change the um absolutely so yeah i can go for example we'll go to baja mode and yeah. then baja puts you in four high yeah but i like to press the button right here and switch it back to two high which is rear wheel drive yeah. that way it's a bit more playful so baja is full loud exhaust rear wheel drive traction loosened off yes that's exactly my favorite mode to be in and then puts on the front camera right here if you're able right. to see that and that way you're able to see exactly, and it moves as you move the steering wheel. Yeah. So you can see your approach angle once you're coming up on things. Um, but yeah, you Should ready? We go, uh, yeah, yeah. We're going straight into the deep end, are we in Baja? Absolutely, well, oh, yeah. look at this field over here and open her up a little bit. <laughs> go explore with this thing. Because, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about it as it goes by. Um, go past the uh, turtle there. Yep. Give him a miss. But um, this is like baby. It's gonna get a little bit uh, yeah, it, it, juicier this later. Like, this is a good starting point. This is like, 
actually say this is a good starting point. We're driving through shrubbery that's like... <laughs> oh, that's cool. But it does that. It's surprisingly smooth doing that. It is. The suspension on these are is literally designed for going fast through a field like this, off-road in a desert. It's, it's designed for a lot more high high speed off roading compared to something like a G wagon or a Jeep, yeah. which is going to be a little bit more slower, rock crawling, more articulation. This is designed to keep the cab as steady as possible and just eat up anything you're going over at 70 miles an hour. So, this and obviously the TRX compete head to head with each other. Is there anything else in that space, or is it kind of? That's it. It's the TRX and the Raptor R. These are the two flagships from yeah. these manufacturers. Chevy doesn't have anything really that competes against these trucks. T-Rex came out first and then the Raptor followed by, uh, there was some complaints saying the Raptor R is significantly you know, 25,000 or 20,000 more MSRP. And uh, some people are like, not sure what you're getting for that money. Um, but they, they don't realize it's just how much more advanced the suspension is yeah. on the Raptors. And uh, for example, the, they pretty much run the Baja 1000 in stock, like bone stock Raptor R's with some, I said, like, I think they had like a roll cage and they literally go out and run it and win it. Whereas the, yeah. you don't see the TRX is doing that. No, okay. And that's where you're paying the difference. All right. Uh, I can sit here and we can play around a little bit in this field. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, that's the thing that's amazing to me. You're like full sliding through the field, but the cab is surprisingly steady. Keeps it nice and steady. <laughs> Chewing up through this stuff. Oh, that's amazing. This is where it's in its element. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need it. But you want it. Absolutely. Oh, that's cool. From one place to the next. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the slightly more fun side. That was more of the beginner side. This is a little more advanced. Okay. So we're going to go from normal since we just came from the road. Yeah. And switch it on over all the way to, as I said, my favorite mode, Baja. That's going to put it in four high automatically. I'm going to back switch to it back drive. to rear wheel drive so we get it a little bit more sideways. Sounds like a plan. This is where I have to hold on tight. Absolutely. And if this doesn't work. That's what these the... grab handles are for. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the Baja mode. Absolutely. And if this doesn't work, uh, we, we, we switch it up in a moment. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I thought you were gonna go the other way there. <laughs> Man. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> you done this a few times then? Just a couple times, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe 20,000 miles or so. <laughs> True test of camera stabilization right here. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay, through the cows. Slow it down through the cows here. <laughs> They're used to it. They're used to it, definitely. <laughs> I'll go out to this back field here that's okay. where the most of the fun happens. At least my most fun in the Raptor. Through another gate. Absolutely. And this is like level three now? This is level three. <laughs> and for level three, we're gonna turn traction control completely off. Okay. Full advanced track, everything off in here. That feels like the uh, the other Fords, you know, There we go, absolutely. You, got, you had, have had a GT500? I currently have. Good man. I'm a big Ford guy. Two Predator engines. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know we're, where we're, we're going. We're just going to go straight into it. We're going to yeah. go. <laughs> Let's test out the suspension. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. No way. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was a good jump. <laughs> You're a madman. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> This is ridiculous! Whoa! <laughs> oh, that is shredding up behind us. Oh my goodness me. Wow! <laughs> Th 
This is actually surprisingly calm considering those kind of jumps. Absolutely, it feels a lot, like once you see it from the outside, it's a lot more dramatic than what it looks yeah. like in here. Wow, are we going, I mean, we're fully four wheels in the air there, right? Oh, oh yeah, so we're definitely all four wheels in the air on these. That suspension is mad. This, this is what it's designed for, designed to eat up everything. <laughs> <laughs> the cows are just like, what are you doing? Being hooligans is what we're doing. What? This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. What on earth? <laughs> for the TRX owners out there, this is what you're paying the extra money for with the Raptor. You okay. don't want to bring your TRX out here. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work the no, same. No, it would not. It would not be as pretty. Do you know how mad that looks from outside? Welcome to Texas. <laughs> when you see something as big as this, jumping up in the air like that. It looks like it shouldn't do it. And this is my fourth Raptor now. I've had all of them out in these fields. I've never knocked on wood. I've never yeah. had any of them have any issues out here. Anything I've asked of it, it's they perform flawlessly. That is just ridiculous to watch. I come out here and do this, and then we're going to be driving back home, putting my kid's car seat in the back, yeah. and taking her to school tomorrow. <laughs> Literally from this to school tomorrow. So, from, from Baja to from school. Baja to school. <laughs> do it all. Wow, what a thing. That's insane. Absolutely. So, can, yeah. I ask, can I ask, can I have a go? <laughs> my Let's go try it. Here we go then. Time to go. I gave you all the instruction I could. <laughs> No, it's up to you. So we're still in the settings we were in before? Yes. You have traction okay. control, we're in Baja mode, rear wheel drive, traction control completely off. Which means if you give it the beans... Yes, yes it does. <laughs> it is just, I mean even this right, even this kind of terrain right here, is seriously gnarly. It is, if you came out here on a regular truck, you would be going, taking them back on a trailer. This is mad. This is, this is absolutely crazy. Oh, now that's cool. That's that feeling of blasting across the dunes or the, or the fields like this. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what it was designed for. <laughs> I mean, there must be a lot of computer stuff going on under the skin as well. Absolutely, yeah. Like I mean, but even from the first generation of these, Ford knew what they were doing. They've run all the generations in the Baja 1000. Yeah. They're serious about this as a performance vehicle from the get-go. <laughs> That was pretty good. Not bad for your first time jumping. First time, right? <laughs> I've not done this before today. That's this, something. Yeah. Like, I've, I've done the rock crawling type stuff. I've done a fair few, like, off-road driving experience sure. things. You know where you get to see a car at a steep angle? Absolutely, with the G-Wagons. You know, that kind of stuff. Up. But not like this. Not where you're properly four wheels off the ground in a goodness knows how heavy off-road truck. I like doing that. It's like driving on... It's like driving on ice. Exactly. It's like, it's got so much power as well. That's the biggest differentiator is, especially for my generation, you know, Gen 2 Raptor having the V6 of 450 horsepower is quick. Yeah. And it's, it is plenty for what you're out here doing. The R just literally, as I said earlier, takes this up to 12. Yeah. And you know that thing about dialing it up to 11. Yeah, exactly. 11 is, is boring. 11 is easy. We are full on 12. <laughs> My face looks to be a right picture. <laughs> God, this is so cool. But you know what? It's also quite quite easy. It is, yeah. It's, like, it's very confidence inspiring. It's like driving the GT500 on track. Absolutely. It's it's the GT500 of this, in the sense that you can kind of step in it and so long as you're not a complete moron. Absolutely, yeah. As long, guess, as, as long as you don't let it get out from underneath you, go over a hill sideways or something, which, yeah. you know, you'd have to be really not smart to do that. Then you can have fun like this and then... 60, 70 miles an hour. Going sideways. <laughs> this is one of the coolest things in a car. 
I, I do have to say to him, I do feel bad for you. Do, do you know why? Why? Because you cannot have this where you live. Well, you can buy one and import it. I guess you can, but then where, where are you going to drive it? Yeah, true. <laughs> we don't have this. <laughs> That's right. why you came to Texas for this. Oh, yeah. One more, one more. <laughs> And obviously you're very familiar with this engine. Very familiar. I mean, I've done 13, 14, 15,000 miles with the G500. Okay, so you're very familiar. How would you say this? Can you, can you hear or feel any kind of resemblance between the two? It's, it's quite similar because the GT500, obviously you don't hear much supercharger. Sure. Certainly not compared to like the Hellcats and that kind of stuff. And that was something a lot of people commented on at the time. This is similar, like you know that it's there, but it drives really, really smoothly in terms of the engine. Absolutely, I think it's a great way to put it. You're doing great. It's a silly amount of power. Like it's a silly amount of power. In America, it's a necessary amount of power. A necessary amount of power, sorry. How <laughs> dare I? How dare I? I just can't believe the relative ease with which you can just jump off things. It's I've got too comfortable with it now. Absolutely. It's <laughs> crazy you can literally go from the dealer and straight out here and do this. <laughs> That was proper. I'd say that was a great time. Great job for your first time. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so cool. We've popped back to base for a moment, but the cool thing about this is we are surrounded, well, by some very, very, very cool cars, but also by three totally different Fords with completely different engines, because the GT has the 3.5 litre twin turbo V6, the engine that in some ways is shared with the regular Raptor, the six cylinder, obviously the supercar. Then we've got the beast of an off-roader with this 5.2 litre supercharged eight cylinder, the V8, as we know for the GT500. And then we've got the Coyote, the five litre NA V8 with the manual in this case in the dark horse. So we've got the muscle car, manual, coupe, just cool GT cruiser, let's say. Then we've got the off-road, the super off-roader. Can we call it a super off-roader? Something like that. And then we've literally got the supercar all from the same brand. And I love that. I love that like difference of the cars and how you can have this portfolio. And that doesn't include the transit van or the hot hatches, all of the other cars that are offered by them as well. And yeah, let's just mention that there's the P1, the 720S and the DBS Ultimate as well over there. This is my kind of day. This is very, very, very good fun. And there's one more thing also. Don't know if you caught it just over here. The 911 Dakar. Yeah also having some fun with that. Respect to Supercar Stephen for actually using these things. Like that's the coolest part of this. Well, we're back out at it. <laughs> You're in your element. <laughs> this is nuts. A little different than driving on the track. It's kind of like just a different take on it, isn't it? It's Absolutely. like a different type of track. Absolutely. There's a lot less traction you're working with. And so, I mean, it really, I think in a, I think in a way, off-road driving, it's a great way to really refine your skills and you can then apply it to the road because if you're able to be out here and know how to you know understand you can push the you can push a vehicle to its limits more yeah. off road and uh, <laughs> really see how to you know how to recover it whenever you're spinning out or you're getting it sideways and yeah the thing with this is you just send it <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's funnier holding the phone because you see how dramatic it is. <laughs> uh, I apologize if there is a sense of seasickness from watching this video. <laughs> Serious speed. Wow. Even that like pretty gnarly bump. I can see why the suspension in this is a big deal. And it's also quite a long wheelbase, so it just kind of handles it. It does. I think something like this bit driving like this, not quite as fast, is probably where you really see because it it's so super smooth. It's like there's a almost a gyro going in just to keep the... Exactly, absolutely. Yeah, the cab stays as level as possible and all the suspension when you're outside, that's doing all the work, all the travel work for you. Oh, 
<laughs> the R just has so much power. Yeah. You have to modulate the throttle a little bit because it just wants to go sideways at 70 miles an hour. I mean, at the end of the day, when you've got everything off, right, you're still in a 700 plus horsepower rear wheel drive car. Exactly. With TC off. And while these hills are a lot of fun, you don't want to hit one sideways at 70 miles an hour. No, no, no. Oh, it kind of goes down here. <laughs> Oh my god. I love that it just keeps going. This is like this is like driving a GT3 RS on a racetrack. Exactly. It, it's engineered just to just keeps doing it. <laughs> Take that grass. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Proper fun, isn't it? More than fun. Oh, this is a bit different. So this is actually, if you go down in there, you're gonna find all kinds of fossils. Oh, really? Yes. This was all underwater at one time. Wow. And, and we can kind of rock crawl through it. So right, wait, right here. what are we in now? We're in- um... We're in off-road right here. Okay, so this is like- So there's rock crawl, but I, we're not gonna need to go into low for this. I mean, this is your more like your TRX and your G 4x4 squared. And... Well, this still outshines the TRX even in this. Gotcha. But this is a bit more of your Jeep and G wagon. That's what I meant, shorter, Jeep, sorry. <laughs> with a shorter wheelbase, this is where it's going to benefit you a bit more. Because that's some serious incline. It just, it just does through it. there. Yeah, it just goes over it like nothing. Like absolutely nothing. Easy peasy. It's kind of fun to have a car that can just go through this. <laughs> like, I'm looking at this like, uh, yeah, nothing in my garage. Don't want to try that with the Pura Sangue. No. That... And that is seriously gnarly and aggressive. It's just easy. It soaks it up like nothing. This is child's play for it. Wow. You really do just want to take this and get lost in the like. That's what it's for. Middle of nowhere go anywhere do anything with it this is quite fun to see i mean this is proper terrain for <laughs> something like this the way the suspension just soaked up that bump the sound of it i love it as well steven drives these things it's like if something happens he can change the part he knows that and he likes to make the most and learn and actually experience what it's all about which is super cool this thing out here just looks so gnarly. <laughs> I love the color on it as well. It just works. What a monster. What a cool day. Look at that. Can I park here? You can park there. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. The way it just went through this stuff though, through this really yeah. like chopped up stuff. Didn't feel like anything no. inside the cabin. And it was like um, super smooth in the way it did it as well. Like this is this is proper, proper terrain. And yeah, just like that. Just nice like easy. that. Just easy. like that. For a moment, have you changed anything on this? Just a few small things to make it a bit more appropriate for my taste as yeah. far as cosmetics and for function a little bit. So I have the HRE Flowform wheels on here, which are 17 inches. They're designed for Jeeps and trucks. Yeah. So this is, they're in their element in this. Uh, I also, which are, they're very similar to stock, just slightly stiffer. I have the geyser springs on here. Yeah. That makes them a little bit taller. And then lastly, and my favorite part is the graphics. Yeah. I changed the graphics on these and this is the Texas flag on this side. And then if you come around the oh, other side. Oh, I get it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the distressed American flag on this side. Just a custom Ooh. touch I wanted to do that's different from the ordinary. I like that. What's the color, by the way? This is code orange. Code orange. This was only for 2023, and they discontinued it with the new model for 2024. The 2024s have slightly more power, don't they? It's like 20 horsepower. It's, yeah, it's 18 horsepower, 18. technically. But okay. when you're, you know, you're talking about 3% more, it, it's not noticeable. Yeah. Um, but it is a power increase, and as many of you guys know, Americans do care about their stats and their horsepower <laughs> numbers. And so that is important for some people. Yeah. For me, my favorite color is orange. And so this is more important for me than having the I have similar, more my, I mean, my GT500 is grab a lime, right? Which was a first year color only. Exactly, yes, I remember that. For the, uh, for the GT500, so same kind of theory. I like, I go for the color. 
Did they change anything else? I guess not really. They, so they did. They changed, upgraded the shocks on them slightly. Okay. I have not driven the new one to compare, but it's supposed to be, it's, it's uh, their dual bypass versus single. Right. And so I'm not quite sure how that feels differently, but it is a slight upgrade they did yeah. between 23 and 24. And then they also changed the front end a bit. They facelifted yeah. it. Um, and some people like the 23 design a bit better. Some people like the 24 design on the front yeah. uh, with the headlights, the grill shape. Uh, they matted out the Ford emblem on the front. Um, okay. So I don't think that's a deal breaker for some no. people, but it is a difference. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Back at base, Ford lineup. That was cool. Thank you for that. Absolutely. A little bit of a different experience than what you get in the UK, oh, isn't it? Oh, for sure. <laughs> There's nowhere I could go and do that. That was mega. What an amazing amount of fun. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you did you. a fantastic job. I'm <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't really know what else to say. I have driven the Lightning before, and there's a lot in common, apart from the powertrain, obviously. That is electric, and this has a very nice V8 up front. It's also <laughs> very, very dirty. You've got things like the pin code entry on the outside. You've got electric seats with lumbar. These are actually the upgrade Recaro sports seats that they offer, um, obviously, for the Raptor R. You've got the practicality that we talked about earlier you've got the big screens with all the settings and everything that you can change and go through and mix all this up you've got buttons storage areas i mean just look at the amount of storage cubbies that's a cubby there's the whole door pocket here there's the central pocket there there's obviously everything here multiple different layers to it there's your cup holders there's your glove box just a whole ton of different storage areas and obviously the flat bed at the back and it's just been a bit of a beast this has just been an absolute beast that was, I mean, I've always looked forward to driving, going out with a Raptor R, and jumping it like that, I think was the way to do it in style. Absolute style. What a day. I think we need to wrap things up there though. A massive thanks to Supercar Steven to be here, to see the P1 again, to go out with the Raptor R, to go exploring on the ranch. He promised the opportunity to do so, and this has just been something completely different. And I tell you what, I've got a lot of respect for this. That was pretty epic to see what the Raptor R can actually do. I'm kind of blown away because I didn't really expect it to be that good, yet also on the road it's fairly compliant, it's comfortable, it's got all of that tech stuff as well as I mentioned. It's something that could be quite fun, maybe a future Shmimobile, maybe a Shmimobile Raptor R, you never know. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching guys, I appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers! <laughs>